Welcome to the review of ISDT FD100, a smart discharger from a manufacturer of high quality chargers and other battery related products. Most of chargers on the market have very limited discharging capabilities, so for anyone who discharges their batteries on a regular basis, a dedicated discharger is usually the way to go. In this review, I will present what ISDT has to offer, will show how the discharger works, and will also put it against a cheaper light bulb based product in an old fashioned dual. Let's have a look at the packaging. Inside the box, there is a discharger itself, a user manual, and a few ISDT stickers. Unlike other ISDT products, the user manual actually contains some useful information how to operate the discharger, so thumbs up for that. Typically for ISDT, the build quality is excellent, we get original design, and the discharger looks great. Nothing to complain about really. There is not much to mention when it comes to the design of the product as it's very simple. This is essentially a heatsink enclosed in an anodized aluminium case with an XT60 port on one side, a fan on the other side and some LEDs and control buttons on top. I like this design a lot. Using the discharger is super straightforward. We only have two buttons to control the unit. The top one changes the number of cells of a connected battery and the bottom one changes the discharging current. So first we have to connect the battery and obviously it has to have an XT60 connector. After that we press any of the buttons to switch it on. Then we change the number of cells. Uh, this is a 6S battery. And after 5 seconds the discharger will start working. There you go. The status LED starts flashing green. When the discharging is finished it will stay solid green. And that's pretty much it. Now let me show you what happens if the number of cells doesn't correspond to the battery that is connected. So again we plug it in and let's select 3S for example and after 5 seconds we'll get an error message and the status LED will start flashing red. So we can now change it to 6S and again after 5 seconds the discharging process will start. When plugging in a battery the discharger always goes back to the previous settings. So say we change it to 1 amp now and we have a 6S battery selected. Just unplug this now and if we plug it back in we'll be still on 6S battery and 1 amp discharging current. When it comes to the user interface I have one small complaint here and this is the brightness of the um, LEDs especially the white ones. They are not very visible in strong light especially direct sunlight so for me they could be a little bit brighter or maybe a different color but apart from that I have no complaints really. And this is pretty much all I can show you when it comes to using the discharger. So now let's have a look at the maximum discharging power and also the final voltage after the discharging process is finished. Let's check the final voltage at the end of the process first. According to the user manual it should be set to 3.8 volts per cell. Of course this is not the balancing discharger so the individual cell voltage may vary. But the final voltage for a 4S battery that is connected now should be around 15.2 volts. Unfortunately there is no easy way to change the final voltage. It is only possible to change it through a PC software using the ISDTSC linker or using one of the smart chargers are the Q6 Pro or T8. This is not ideal and I don't understand why it has to be so complicated. Plus it requires a purchase of additional product. On top of that at the time of working on this review I couldn't find software that would allow me to modify the voltage 
and I didn't have much luck using the T8 charger either. I'm sure this will change soon, but this is definitely something to bear in mind if buying a product now. Okay, looks like we're done here. Let's check the final voltage of the battery. The beeping should go on for one minute and after that it should stop. Okay, so the final voltage is 15.24 and the individual cell voltage is around 3.8. Obviously this result will depend on the quality of your battery. This is quite a good one and that's why the individual cell voltages are quite close to each other. That's quite a good result actually. Let's quickly check the maximum discharging power. So we just selected a 6S battery with a 6 amp discharging current. As we can see here, the discharger meets the specification and we're getting around 80 watts of discharging power. Before concluding the review, let's have a quick duel I mentioned earlier and put ISDT against a cheaper alternative built around light bulbs made by AO Coda. They should offer similar performance even though the AO coder is rated at 150 watts. This relates to the total wattage of the bulbs and the actual maximum measured discharging power is around 80 watts as well. However, since ISDT doesn't have a balancing feature, the actual discharge time can be different here. I am discharging two identical batteries charged to the same voltage down to 3.8 volts per cell. While we're waiting, let me point out the key differences between the products. ISDT is a simple discharger and does not offer any additional features like balancing. It is much simpler to use, however, changing the discharge voltage is more complicated and cannot be done on the discharger. On the other hand, it is possible to easily change the discharge current on ISDT and it can only be done by unplugging the bulbs on AO coder. In terms of noise, AO Coda is 100% silent and as you can hear, ISDT has a fan built in. In terms of build quality and the design, the AO Coda feels like an unfinished product compared to ISDT. Also, extra care has to be taken when using it since the light bulbs are potential fire hazard and they do not have any kind of enclosure. Price wise, is roughly $15 for AO Coda versus $35 for ISDT. Huh, looks like we have a winner. ISDT has finished at around 12.45 and as we can see AO Coda is still balancing the cells here. So let's quickly check the end discharge voltage here. Since two batteries are never the same, even if they come from the same factory, to make the test fair, I swapped the batteries and ran the whole test again. And again, I received the same results with ISDT finishing much quicker than AO Coda, which takes really long time at the end of the discharging process to balance the cells. As you can see, after 25 minutes, the AO Coda was still balancing the cells. So I finished discharging the battery using ISDT and was done in less than 3 minutes, again, with really good results at the end. Even though ISDT FD100 is not a more powerful product, as a simple discharger is a clear winner for me in this test, as it works much quicker and finishes discharging with very good end voltage readings. And this brings me to the end of the review and a few final words. Looks like ISDT managed to make another high quality product 
that stands out from the crowd and does exactly what it says on the label. Yes, I would prefer the dish charger to be a bit more powerful and quieter. With brighter LEDs and possibility to easily change discharge voltage on the charger. But none of these things are deal breakers really. So for anyone in the market for a dish charger that doesn't have to be silent, FD100 has a lot to offer. Namely, solid performance, high quality, great design, straightforward operation and selectable discharge current in a compact and good looking package. I hope we enjoyed the review. If you have any questions or comments, please do not hesitate to post below or join the discussion at RC Groups forums. Thank you for watching.